Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about short-term memory. First of all, what is it? Well, short-term memory is our ability to hang on to information essentially while we're working with it. So for example, when I start a sentence, do I remember the beginning of that sentence by the time I get to the end of the sentence? That's an example of short-term memory. Um, what you're thinking about right now, right? The ability to think about ideas, plan for the future, all of that requires short-term memory. Uh, short-term memory, again, this is the model from Atkinson and Schifrin. Short-term memory is really at the center, the core of the memory systems, and it involves a lot of those conscious processes that students can use to improve their memory. So rehearsing information, working with it, that sort of thing. Uh, if you need to look up a telephone number long enough to make a call, that's an example of short-term memory, right? When you first see that phone number, sensory memory kicks in, but you, if you pay attention to the number so you can remember it long enough to actually, um, I was gonna say dial the number, but no one dials anymore, uh, long enough to put the number into your cell phone, that requires working memory, right? You might be saying to yourself, 797-2279, uh, 797-2279. How much can you hold in sensory memory? Well, that work, uh, the classic work was done by this gentleman, George Miller, uh, and he was part of a group of people who worked for the telephone company, right? They, uh, Ma Bell, um, or AT&T, used to have a really big uh, research facility in New Jersey, where Princeton is located, and they invited a lot of scientists to push the envelope on communication. Um, and, you know, one of the first questions is, okay, how long do you make? A telephone number. Now this is in the days before uh, there was such a thing as programmed phone numbers. Um, you had to actually remember your phone number. So um, you do that research and what do you find out if you're George Miller? You find out that our memory is, our short-term memory can hold about on average seven items. And lo and behold, if you exclude the area code, how long are phone numbers in the US? Seven digits. That's because of cognitive psychologists. Um, uh, Miller also argued that uh, there's something special about the number seven, at least in human cognition. We seem to like to parse the world that way. So there's seven days in the week, seven C's, seven primary colors, seven notes on a musical scale. Seven seems to be something relatively important. Okay, now how can I get you to believe that your short-term memory holds about seven things. Well, you've guessed it, we're gonna do demonstrations. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a grid of pictures. I'm gonna show you that grid for about 10 seconds and I'm gonna take the grid away and your job is to, the grid is gonna be filled with shapes. Your job is to draw all the shapes that you remember. Okay, students, you've got my slides. This is a great place to write on the slides. So. Here we go. How many of these pictures can you remember? Okay, draw them. Go ahead, write them down. You can write the words if you want to. How many do you remember? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Short term memory. Okay, I am going to do another short term memory uh, study with you. And here we go. I'm going to show you a list of letters. We're going to do this five times. We're going to do the same thing five times. I'm going to show you a list of letters briefly, take the letters away, and ask you to write down all the letters that you remember. So we're going to do it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Okay, and each iteration, the list is going to get longer. Here we go. Ready? Here's the first list. Write down all the letters you remember. Easy, right? Okay, here we go. You ready for the next list of letters? Okay, write them down. Go ahead. I'll wait. Next list. 
Okay, write them down. Fourth list. Write them down. And our final list. Okay, write them down. When you're ready, you can look back up and here is the list of the letters that you just saw. Now, everybody probably got the first list 100% correct, right? And the task probably got harder as you went along, right? At a certain point, it the number of letters went beyond your short-term memory capacity, how much you can hold in short-term memory. But you may have noticed some interesting patterns, right? So you may have noticed that in the third list, the word pads, P-A-D-S, was there, right? Or you may have noticed that you were able to pick up the letters at the beginning of the list and the end of the list better than the letters in the middle of the list. Hang on to those thoughts. We're going to be using them later. Okay, so summary. The capacity of short-term memory is about seven plus or minus two things. Our, your short-term memory is another bottleneck. Now we talked about bottlenecks, right, when we covered attention. It turns out short-term memory is another one. What happens when you need to hold more than about seven things in short-term memory? Turns out it's kind of a disaster. Um, researchers have shown us that if we need to make decisions about 10 or more things, right? We need to be able to compare 10 or more things. We're terrible at it. So, for example, uh, if you go shopping on Amazon and you say you want a toothbrush, so you type in toothbrush, and what happens? 30 different types of toothbrushes show up and you have to pick which toothbrush you want. Well, you would think, gosh, all these choices, I can make a fabulous choice and find just the right toothbrush for me. But it turns out when you get more than 10 choices, your decision-making actually drops. The quality of the decisions that you make actually drops. Um, here's another example. This was done with students back in 2006 and they looked at uh, job searches for students. What jobs were students looking for? And they found out that the more information that students collected about each job, the less satisfied the students were with their decision for which job to take. Um, we get overwhelmed if we have to work with more than about seven thoughts or concepts or, well, actually, what? What is it? S items? Letters? Hmm. Well, you know from the example where you were writing out all the lists of words that, I'm sorry, all the lists of letters, that if some of those letters formed a word, that was easy to remember. So we know that short-term memory capacity is not seven plus or minus two letters. It is seven plus or minus two chunks of meaningful information. So a chunk is a term that cognitive psychologists use to refer to a meaningful unit of information. So for example, on the display right now, I have a whole bunch of letters. If I asked you to remember all those letters briefly, that list you'd probably do pretty well in because the letters have meaning, right? KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Uh, MTV, CBS, IBM, NCIS. So you can remember the entire list, that entire list, because the uh, letters form meaningful units. An even better chunking example is right below. There's an extremely long list of letter. I'm sure you'll remember all of the letters in this very long list of letters, which reads, by grouping items into units, we remember more. That's an example of chunking. Here's another example of chunking. I'm going to read to you 12 different words, and when we're done, I want you to write down all the words, okay? 
So the 12 words are, you ready? North, south, east, west, front, back, left, right, father, mother, brother, sister. Write them down. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, how many of the words did you remember? All of them? Right. 12 is much better than seven, much bigger than seven plus or minus two, so how did you do it? Well, the words have meaning and they can be grouped into chunks across the words, right? North, south, east, and west, all the cardinal directions. Okay, that's it for short-term memory capacity. Come back and we'll talk about short-term memory duration.